Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing this morning? I was excited about coming to church this morning. And yeah, I, um, we all, Elsie and I always look forward to, to being here with our family. And it's, uh, it's great. My good friend Bishop Titus Bai will be with us next Sunday. And he's already had a message brewing on his heart for all of us when I talked to him last week. So um, I believe it's going to be good. And we have a brand new married couple fresh from the altar this past week that's here this morning. Marion and Kirsty. Could you just kind of wave a little bit? Make sure you see them after the service. <laughs> Furman and Jimmy did an awesome job making sure they got hitched properly on Monday night. So, God bless you guys. Um, you may have noticed a table back there with t-shirts. Um, it's actually going to be tied into my message later on, but any donations that you put in back there, the t-shirts are free, really. Um, but any donations that come in back there will uh, go toward our travel expenses for, for October. Um, we'll be here next Sunday, but then the rest of the month we'll be traveling all over the place. So... Uh, we won't get to see you guys, so be in prayer for us. But this morning, this morning, I want to talk about the pierced ear. The pierced ear. Now, for some of you, for some of you, that was like immediate, like, oh my goodness, I wonder what he's going to say. <laughs> Is he going to tell us we're not allowed to have pierced ears? Well, you'll you just hang on, you'll find out. Um, the pierced ear. The Bible actually talks about it. And in the setting that I'm talking about here this morning, well, just follow along. Um, I invite you to turn in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 21. Exodus chapter 21 uh, from verse 2. And I'm using the New Living Translation, so it might read a little different than yours. Um, I'm going to read from verse 2 through verse 6. If you buy a Hebrew slave, he may serve for no more than six years. Set him free in the seventh year, and he will owe you nothing for his freedom. If he was single when he became your slave, he shall leave single. But if he was married before he became a slave, then his wife must be freed with him. If his master give him a, gave him a wife while he was a slave and they had sons or daughters, then only the man will be free in the seventh year. But his wife and children may still belong to his master. Verse 5, But the slave may declare... I love my master, my wife, and my children. I don't want to go free. If he does this, the master must present him before God. Then his master must take him to the door or doorpost and publicly pierce his ear with an owl. After that, the slave will, be, will serve his master for life. Now, if you would turn to Deuteronomy 15. Deuteronomy 15 and verse 12. Deuteronomy 15 and verse 12. These are Old Testament passages. Deuteronomy 15 and verse 12. If a fellow Hebrew sells himself or herself to be your servant 
and serves you for six years, in the seventh year you must set that servant free. When you release a male servant, do not send him away empty-handed. Give him a generous free will gift from your flock, your thrashing floor, and your wine press. Share with him some of the bounty with which the Lord your God has blessed you. Remember that you were once slaves in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God redeemed you. That is why I am giving you this command. Verse 16, But suppose your servant says, I will not leave you because he loves you and your family, and he has done well with you. In that case, take an owl and push it through his earlobe into the door. After that, he will be your servant for life and do the same for your female servants. Wow. Pier the pierced ear. Now I know quite a number of you, especially of the ladies, have your ears pierced. That's not what I'm talking about this morning. In, in this setting, as I understand it, um, here is an owl, an old one that I purchased at a garage sale some time ago. Because this message has been brewing for several months already. And owls are still used today. Leather workers still use them. A lot of it is done by machines, but anything done by hand in the leather works, they still use an owl. Some carpenters use a style of this if they want to do a little center punch in a, in a piece of wood or something. And in this setting here, and I, now I need, I need a volunteer. I, I want to pierce your ear. Any volunteers? I, need a, I won't pierce your ear, but I would like a volunteer. Who, who do we got? Who's going to be vulnerable to come up front here? I'll pick somebody if I don't get a volunteer. Good. Step right up here into the limelight. Boy, this guy's tall. <laughs> now, I know you're Curly's son, yeah. but I can't say your name. Kyle. Kyle. Okay. So, Kyle, for the, uh, for the sake of the biblical account, is my servant. He's served with me for six years, and he has been a really, really good worker. So, so legally now, uh, he's, he's done his time, so to speak. He's, the debt has been paid. It's been cleared. And so as his master now, I go to Kyle and I say, Kyle, thank you very much for the way that you've served me these past six years. And I want you to know, I'm, I'm giving you X amount of sheep and, and cattle and, and here's some wine to go with it and I want to bless you. And then you turn and you look at me and you say, well, Phil, you know, I've really enjoyed serving you these last six years. In fact, in fact, you even provided a wife for me and we now have a son. And I really, really appreciate everything that you've done for me. You, you took me from a place where, where I didn't know what in the world I was going to do because I, I was in debt over my head and you bailed me out and you've helped me. And even though you've set me free, Phil, I want you to know I'm willing to serve you for the rest of my life. Okay? Are you following along? So now I, as his master, say, okay, we need, we need a public record of this. That he actually is going to serve me for the rest of his life. And so with that, we, we go to the, to the public 
date. Now, I'm not sure how we're going to do this, <laughs> Kyle. Here, I need to get my hammer yet, just, just for effects, okay? <laughs> just for the effects, okay? So, so, see if you can kind of get up against this door frame somehow. And we're, we're going to take this and, can you see that? Put it right there in that lobe. And we're just going to go kerpow through that thing. And the elders from the town are watching. This is a public court hearing. Kyle has committed himself to be my servant for life. Even though I set him free. In his freedom, he chose to serve his master. There really is a spiritual application to that. That's what we want to talk about this morning. You can go ahead and have a seat. Here, now, just a minute, before you go, come over here. This may not be the right size, but nailed it. Jesus also was pierced. My sin, my shame, his grace, Jesus. So if it's not the right size, you can get another one on the table back there. Thank you. Let's give a hand for Kyle. I brought a piece of leather along. That's what you do, what the leather workers do with an owl. They, they pierce a hole in a piece of leather so they can either use it for like a, a belt or if they want to put a thread through there, do something by hand, they can do that. So this is an owl. And what he's saying here is that in, in your Freedom. We talk in our country today, in the church of Jesus Christ today, we talk a lot about our freedom in Christ. And we're free. We really, really are free. Jesus has paid the price so that we can be free. And sometimes I, I feel like in, in our celebrating our freedom, that sometimes we, we fail to realize that there was a commitment that we made when we were free to choose Jesus. You see, in the illustration we had with Kyle, Kyle was free. He didn't have to serve me because I set him free. But because he went through that public ceremony, his ear was, his earlobe was pierced. I am serving my master for life. That, that then meant that if a better offer came along a year down the road or two years down the road, he couldn't take the offer. If, a, if another Master would come to Kyle and he would say, Kyle, you know, really, you, you didn't get a good enough deal with your former master. And he offers you more benefits currently. Kyle, because of the public declaration that he had made, I'm going to serve my master for life even though I'm free. It ties him, as it were, to that master. And I want us this morning to think about that in our relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus, too, was pierced. Hundreds of years before Jesus died on the cross, the prophet Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 53, if you want to turn to it, Isaiah chapter 53, 
It says in verse 5, But he was pierced for our rebellion, crushed for our sins. He was beaten so that we could be whole. He was whipped so we could be healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. We have left God's paths to follow our own. Yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all. Jesus too was pierced. In John chapter 19, it says that the soldiers didn't take an owl, but even after he had died on the cross, the Bible says in, in John 19 and verse 34, that the soldiers came, they, they broke the legs of the thieves that were crucified with them, him, because they were yet not dead. But when they came to Jesus, the Bible says that he had already died. And so to fulfill scripture that none of his bones will be broken, the Bible says that they took a spear and they run it into his side. And blood and water came out. They pierced the side of Jesus. Jesus was pierced for me. He was pierced for you. So, remember when Jesus was in the garden? When Jesus was in the garden before he was crucified, and three times he went to his father and he said, in his prayer, and he said, Father, if it's possible, can you make so that this cup is taken away from me? Three times he asked that because... Now, I don't think it was because of the physical agony that he knew he had to endure. But he was going to take all of my sin. All of your sin. All of the immoral things that we've ever committed. And all of those way back in the illustration that we had from the Old Testament. And Jesus was going to take all those sins upon himself. And I think that's why he was in agony. And Luke, the physician that wrote the gospel, stated that his sweat was like as great drops of blood that were falling to the ground. Because of what Jesus went through for you and for me. So how does that relate to this? I want us to look at a few verses. Luke 22 Luke 22, verse 24 to 27. Luke 22. Then they began to argue among themselves about who would be the greatest among them. Jesus told them, In this world the kings and the great men lorded over their people, yet there are, they are called friends of people. But among you it will be different. Those who are the greatest among you should take the lowest rank. The leader should be like a servant. Who is more important? The one who sits at table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here. For I am among you as one who serves. Jesus modeled what it meant to be a servant. He came to serve. He didn't come to be served, but he came to serve. That's why he gave his life for me and for you. That's why today we can say I'm free in Christ. Because he paid the price. He paid the price so that we can be free. But even as Kyle in our illustration chose to serve his master for the rest of his life. My friends, that is what happened for me and for you when the time when I knelt, when I invited Jesus Christ to come into my life. It was like, okay, here I am, God. 
I am, I want to, out of my freedom to choose to serve, I choose to serve you. It's the devil that comes along and makes those. But you know, you could dabble in pornography. You could dabble in, in sexual immorality. You could tell this lie and it really doesn't matter that much. Because after all, you're free. And how often do we buy into the lies from the devil because we're free and the next thing that we know we're really not free. We find ourselves in bondages to things that pull us away from the relationship that we had with our Heavenly Father. It's like it's like Kyle in the illustration committed himself to serve his master for the rest of his life. And another guy comes along for practical purpose, we'll say Maynard, with the big pockets comes along and he offers Kyle a much better pay situation. And so Kyle says, you know what? Maynard is paying me a thousand bucks more a month. I'm going to go with that. And he leaves. He violates the allegiance that he had made. And that, I'm afraid, is what I have done too often. Maybe you've done that too often. Where even though... Even though spiritually your ear was pierced to Jesus. I'm going to follow Jesus for the rest of my life. And all at once we find ourselves in a situation. Where we realize. That we have followed the promptings of the devil. Rather than the prompting and the leading of the Holy Spirit of God in our life. Ephesians chapter 4 and while I'm reading this I would just like you I would just like you to listen don't even follow along in your Bibles well I say I guess you can if you want to but just just listen just allow the Word of God to minister to your heart in in the heading in my Bible, it says, Living as Children of Light. With the Lord's authority, I say this, Live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. Their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life God gives because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They have no sense of shame, they live for lustful pleasure and eagerly practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. If for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good hard work and then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid 
of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Is your ear pierced by Jesus? And because in Bible times, it was very significant if somebody had their ear pierced in that public setting. There, there, was, there was no question as to who this person belonged to. A New Testament example, I believe, of a pierced ear is water baptism. When you become born again, the Holy Spirit of God comes inside of you and you experience new life in Christ. I believe at that point you should be baptized in water. Because it's a public declaration. Whether it's here or in a swimming pool or in the ocean where you get baptized. They immerse you. They put you under the water. And you come up out of the water as a new person in Christ. It's like telling the world. I, I have been nailed. I've been nailed. To the doorpost. And I'm publicly declaring my allegiance to Jesus Christ. Because I believe when Jesus returns, he's coming back for a bride, not a girlfriend. Last Monday night, was Myron's turn. And they were so happy. He was so happy for his bride, all dressed so beautifully. And that's how it is for Jesus. He's coming back. The, the, this time here, as it were, when, when we commit our lives to Jesus Christ, it's like we're engaged to Jesus Christ. We're engaged. We've, we've, the, we've got the, the diamond. I'm committed in this relationship. No more other boyfriends. And that's what Jesus is coming back for. And so this morning, maybe you're like I am sometimes, including this past week. I kind of felt like I had kind of just been nonchalant in a number of ways in my life. And, and, and I had to come to Jesus and say, you know what? I, I want to renew. I confess I've not done things that I always should have done. And maybe you're here this morning and you've already had your ear pierced, as it were, with Jesus. Or maybe you're here this morning and you realize, you know what? I, I, I've never gone through that spiritually where everything Jesus has done for me and I've, I've really, I've, I've never become born again. 
And maybe you want to do that this morning as the, as the worship team comes up and takes their place. I'm going to give opportunity if you want to come and pray. Somebody will pray with you. And we can pray together. Or maybe you're here and you, and you think, you know what? I've kind of had an exit and realized I've been involved in things I shouldn't have been involved with. Jesus paid the price already and I, I just want to come and say, you know God, I just, Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of this. Because I, re I, I, I want true freedom. I want to really, really operate in, tr in true freedom. And if that's you, then just please come. I'm going to have a, a word of prayer and I'll wait a little bit if you want to come and pray. Feel free to do so. Let's stand together as we pray.